Hello, I'm Logan Lindell. And I'm Vito Zappa. We're going to discuss the functional morphology of bite mechanics in the Great Barracuda. First, we will give some general background information about the Barracuda and how it hunts. Then we will go in depth about some of the subtopics of how the Great Barracuda jaw works and how it allows the Barracuda to adapt to its environment. First off, we will give some general background about the Great Barracuda. The scientific name of this fish is Sphirena Barracuda. The Great Barracuda can grow to be longer than 5 feet. However, the average grows to be 2 to 3 feet. The Great Barracuda can grow to be over 100 pounds, but the average is found to be around 20 pounds. It utilizes speed and size to attack its prey. The Barracuda can attack very quickly, even swimming at speeds up to 36 miles per hour. To attack, the Barracuda uses a swift ram feeding strike. This consists of the Barracuda forcefully swimming at prey with its mouth open and closing its jaw on its target prey. This process will be talked about more later on in our presentation. The Barracuda is also known for its very strong jaw that can slice its prey into pieces. This allows the Barracuda to attack and to be able to swallow prey larger than the gape or opening of its jaw. This will also be covered in our presentation later on. Our main focus was on the paper, Functional Morphology of Bite Mechanics in the Great Barracuda, Sferina Barracuda, by Justin Grubich, Aaron Rice, and Mark Wesney. This paper examines the functional morphology and biomechanics of the ram biting behavior in the Great Barracuda. The researchers first studied the anatomy of the Barracuda jaw by examining fresh fish and preserved museum specimen. The researchers also investigated the posterior portions of the oral jaw that slice through prey by using high-speed videos of Barracuda attacking its prey. Now we will look at the evolution of the jaw anatomy in the Great Barracuda. The Great Barracuda is able to act as a predator toward many other species of fish because of its particular jaw morphology. The main variation in the Barracuda jaw anatomy is the large, sphere-like underbite of the mandible that projects well beyond the upper jaw. This underbite occurs at the most posterior point of the jaw and causes the jaw to bite in a scissor-like action. This can be seen in the image to the right as pointed out by the red arrow. This image shows the musculoskeletal anatomy of the head and jaw of the Great Barracuda. The premaxilla slides past the dentary to make a powerful scissor-like bite. For pretty much all jaws, including the human jaw, the largest amount of force from a bite occurs at the most posterior teeth, where the scissor-like action occurs. In a barracuda, the posterior bite force ranges between 3 and 258 newtons, depending on the size of the fish. On the other hand, the force of an anterior bite ranges between 1 and 93 newtons, depending on the size of the fish. In order to be able to apply a bite with a large amount of force, other parts of the barracuda jaw must be able to absorb the same force. The top of the great barracuda mouth has evolved to have an elongated palatine bone with an enlarged palato-quadrate cartilage, which functions to absorb the impact of the bite forces that occur during the barracuda's strike on another fish. While the mandible has a unique sphere-like underbite, it is not the only unique part of the barracuda jaw. The biting elements of the upper jaw also contribute to the overall strong bite of the barracuda. The maxilla, premaxilla, and palatine of the upper jaw contribute to the strength of the barracuda bite by functioning as a single anteriorly swinging unit. When a barracuda opens its jaw, the maxilla pivots at the palatine process and causes the rami of the premaxilla to rotate, resulting in the recurved teeth pointing forward at an increased angle and increasing the gape of the jaw. This is pointed out by the red circular arrow at the top of the picture on the right. This image showing premaxillary rotation is from a paper by Habegger et al. The dentary is also able to abduct, which promotes the elevation of the upper jaw by the maxillomandibular ligament. In the figure from Habegger et al. to the right, the red arrow at the bottom shows the abduction of the dentary. The maxillomandibular ligament is labeled as LMMA. This enhanced rotation not only causes teeth to point in the direction of prey to help slice it apart, but it also helps create a larger gape of the mouth. The larger mouth gape allows the barracuda to attack and feed on larger prey than other types of predatory fish are able to. Now I'm going to talk about the jaw muscles that make the barracuda jaw anatomy so powerful. 
The abductor mandibulae complex muscles make up the main muscles that close the jaw and therefore play an important role in the morphology of the barracuda jaw. The adductor mandibulae complex is made up of three distinct subdivisions, A1, A2, and A3. The A2 and A3 subdivisions are the primary bite force muscles as they attach to the posterior corner of the mandible. This can be seen in the figure from the Grubich et al. paper on the right. The A2 subdivision is shown in blue and the A3 subdivision is shown in green. The contraction of these muscle subdivisions is characterized by dynamic muscle contraction kinematics and results in maximum bite force occurring at the back corner of the mandible. The A2 and A3 muscle subdivisions snap the jaw closed and cause the teeth to impale the prey. After the initial impaling of the prey, the barracuda uses rapid and repeated muscle contractions to create rapid bites to forcefully slice and sever the prey into multiple fragments. This unique morphology and mechanism of the barracuda jaw allows for the barracuda to feed on prey larger than the gape of its mouth. Next, we will be talking about the ram biting technique developed by the barracuda to give it an advantage while hunting. The barracuda is a unique fish that has gained a very different eating style resulting from its jaw morphology. The barracuda having a lower elongated jaw is able to slice and impale fish at a better rate than most other fish. Having this forceful jaw, the barracuda has adapted a new way of eating which has evolved from ram feeding. Ram feeding is a technique used by predatory fish where the body forms an S shape in the water. The fish then springs out of the S shape at its prey to deliver a blow to attack. The revolutionized new way for the barracuda is called ram biting, which uses the force and speed of the fish to deliver a blow that slices the prey in half. The barracuda attacks the prey with an open mouth resulting from the elongated jaw, which has an enhanced rotation perfect for slicing. The mouth utilizes dynamic muscle contractions which can open and close the mouth at rapid speeds. For example, it only takes the barracuda 40 milliseconds to close its jaw and slice the prey in two. The ram biting method is preferable for the occasion when the prey is much larger than the mouth itself. This makes it easier to swallow the prey in smaller pieces. The barracuda also having a high swimming velocity is able to combine this with the S-shaped motion of the body and the force of the jaw bite in order to produce the slicing manner needed. The evolutionary advantage is a result of the force and large underbite of the jaw. This produces almost a scissor-like motion which slices the prey. The figure on the right from Grubich et al. shows the kinematic sequence of the barracuda during the strike of ram biting. As you can see, the lower jaw comes out and the prey is attacked with an open mouth at high speeds. If the prey was bigger, it would have been sliced in two. When looking at the contents of the barracuda's stomach, completely separate residues of the same fish are found, confirming that the barracuda slices its prey fully before swallowing the pieces whole. The image on the right is from the paper by Mohamed Izadeh et al. and shows the contents of the barracuda's stomach, showing two separate fragments of a fish. This is helpful to see as it perfectly shows the effects of ram biting. The larger prey that is too much to swallow can be sliced effectively in two separate pieces using the force of the jaw and the swimming velocity. This shows just how adaptive this style of feeding is and how the barracuda has such a unique jaw that has evolved precisely for hunting and slicing larger prey. Due to the adaptations of the jaw, the great barracuda has a flexible lifestyle and diet that allows it to thrive in a multitude of different environments. Barracudas have been reported throughout different bodies of tropical waters around the world. They live in ecosystems that include seagrass beds, coral reefs, mangrove estuaries, and open seas. They occupy these different ecosystems because they can find many sources of food in each. The barracuda is an apex predator whose diet consists almost entirely of fish. Areas with coral reefs and seagrass are also beneficial for the barracuda when hunting because they provide barracudas with camouflage. Barracudas hunt with a lion weight tactic where they wait for the prey to wander near them before they use an S shape to accelerate and capture it. During juvenile years, most barracuda will be found in these seagrass areas. As they grow in size, barracudas may venture into coral reefs and even cross vast open waters. Barracudas are sheltered at a juvenile age and hidden from predation. But as they get bigger, their jaw also increases in size and strength. This allows for the barracuda to be able to free roam and feed on larger prey. The image on the right is from a paper by Gottfried et al., which shows a large distribution of barracuda in light blue all across the globe. 
So overall, because of the jaw morphology, the barracuda is able to adapt to many different environments and feed on many different species of fish with different shapes and sizes. To conclude, the unique jaw morphology and anatomy of the great barracuda allows it to slice larger prey into smaller remains that can be swallowed. The bones of the mandible and upper jaw, along with the abductor mandibulae complex muscles, are modified to allow for a stronger and quicker bite than most other fish. The barracuda uses its distinctive jaw, along with ram feeding, to slice larger prey into smaller parts that can be swallowed whole. This process, particular to the barracuda, has become known as ram biting. Because the barracuda can feed on many different sizes of fish, it can survive in multiple different ecosystems in tropical waters around the world. The specialized jaw of the barracuda allows it to adapt to its environment and feed on many different sizes of prey, even prey larger than the gape of the barracuda's mouth. Here are the references we used in this presentation. Thanks for listening.